Shalom from Israel. I'm Shira Sorkaram, and I want to welcome you to Israel Frontline, your guide to Israel and the Middle East. We want to give you information you will probably not hear in the mainstream media regarding life in Israel and the Israeli-Arab conflict. We'll add a biblical perspective to our reality. Today, we continue the subject of Hamas is like ISIS and ISIS like Hamas. Examining what do all terrorist organizations have in common and why the West should not be ignoring their threats. On our program today, how terrorists are born. What about the Christians in Gaza? The God of Islam and the God of Israel. And later, our panel will once again answer our questions related to Islamic terrorism. The new N-word for brainwashing is radicalization. People, especially the young, who are often more susceptible to being brainwashed, join cults and become slaves, chattels, and victims. In a similar way, Islamic Jihad usually attracts young men who are violence prone and who are gratified by the prospect of torturing, murdering, and maiming. The brainwashing factor comes in when their consciences are numbed by being told this is the will of Allah. Radicalization does two things. It creates both a delusional pride and super abhorrence towards anyone on the outside of its cause and philosophy. The power to watch others suffer, the power to snuff out lives, and the power to sexually pervert feeds their adrenaline and gives them a high they must constantly replenish. This opens up an insatiable appetite for depravity. Essential to the steps to radicalization is the lie with a capital L. The lie must rewrite history. Children are taught the lie from birth. It is in school books, reinforced daily on TV, in books, magazines, newspapers, the internet, in pictures and billboards, in speeches and ceremonies. The lie says the Palestinian nation has always existed in Palestine since time immemorial and Palestine will belong to the Palestinian people eternally. The lie says the Jews have never before stepped foot in Palestine and are intruders. The lie says Allah loves martyrs and is pleased when Muslims die driving the hated Jews out of their land. All of these suppositions are lies. The truth is there has never been a Palestinian state and until Yasser Arafat entered the picture, there has never been a Palestinian people. Yet they make up the ideology that manipulates and shapes the Arab Muslim people's hearts and minds and actions concerning Israel. Incredibly, throughout the Arab world, the poor, the rich, the day laborer and the doctor, the historian and the archeologist virtually all actually believe these lies. They have rewritten history. We who know the Bible are well aware there is a massive unseen world with evil spirits directing evil people who accept this path of death. The greatest tragedy of these terrorist groups is the fact that they take small children and make them into monsters born only to murder, rape, and torture. For Islamic believers, the God Allah creates the future. The world will become a caliphate, ruling all peoples who will become Muslims and live according to Sharia law. This then is a goal worth giving your life for, especially when you can kill, rape, and torture the infidels, anyone not like you. But the greatest incentive to these young Muslim men is their belief that whatever is forbidden in this world 
will be approved in heaven. Seventy-two virgins will be waiting for those who kill and are killed. Here's a puzzle for the world's leaders who demand Israel make peace with the Palestinians. Mahmoud Abbas was voted in as president of the state of Palestine on January 15, 2005. He was to serve four years until 2009, when new elections were to be held, but that didn't happen. Abbas is still in office. He did hold parliamentary elections in 2006. Guess who won? The Hamas party. As conflict in Gaza grew between Fatah and Hamas, Hamas took over the entire Gaza Strip by force, killing, maiming, and expelling Fatah officials. Today, after the recent 50-day war with Hamas, professional polls reveal that if elections were held today, a Hamas terrorist leader would be the next Palestinian prime minister, receiving 61% of the vote, while Mahmoud Abbas of Fatah would get only 32%. In fact, Hamas's popularity is higher in the West Bank, 66%, than in Gaza, which is 53%. Also, if elections for the Palestinian parliament were held now, Hamas would win again, hands down. Furthermore, a majority of Palestinians, 53%, say they support armed struggle against Israel, while 20% say nonviolence is the best way to achieve statehood. Translation, according to this poll, when the next Palestinian democratic elections are held, whenever that might be, the Hamas terrorist organization will become the new rulers of both Gaza and the biblical Judea and Samaria, which, as you know, is the West Bank. As terrorism would spread throughout Judea and Samaria, just as it has in Gaza, Israel's existence would be in mortal danger. No civilian planes would dare fly into Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion airport. Tourism would come to a dead stop and Israelis would be living in bomb shelters throughout the entire country. Letting Hamas rule in the West Bank would be the same as ISIS moving into Baghdad or Boko Haram into Nigeria's capital, Lagos. In fact, Egypt is already fighting ISIS fighters in the Sinai Desert, and ISIS flags have been seen in some Israeli Arab villages and in the West Bank. But that's not all. Former Mossad chief Ephraim Halevi says at least 10 Israeli Arabs here volunteer to fight with ISIS. And he says they pose a greater threat than the possibility of ISIS threatening Israel's borders. The danger that Israeli Arabs will be attracted to this new army of evil barbarians is of a considerable concern to Israel's security officials. Fortunately, Israeli Arab leaders declare they want nothing to do with ISIS. The Christians in the Gaza Strip are a tiny minority. Most of them live in Gaza City. There are only about 1,300 Christians left, and the majority of them belong to the Greek Orthodox Church. About 150 are Catholic, and the evangelical Christians number around 70. Some of them belong to the Baptist Church. There are more than 30 Gazan believers who have come to faith from different backgrounds. A few years back, the Baptist Church had around 200 members, but many have left after the murder of the Bible Society's leader by Islamic militants in 2007. Others have been advised by the Hamas government to leave Gaza for their own safety. There is an ongoing campaign to convert the Christian families and individuals to Islam. Muslims use verses from the Quran describing Christians as infidels. Sadly, others under severe threats have actually converted to Islam over the past 15 years. 
Several church members have become casualties of violence between warring Palestinian factions, and two were killed in the recent war. The Christian family's economic status is similar to the rest of the Gazan population. Some are poor, there's common workers, there's the educated, merchants, doctors, engineers, and so on. After this last conflict, Many of the Christians are really thinking seriously to find ways to move to the West Bank, the USA, or European countries. Most Christians living in Gaza are against war. Satan, the current god of this world, uses many different devices. In the West, atheists and many of those leaning to the extreme left have long ago abandoned the standards of the Bible. Therefore, they have no compass of right and righteousness. They wander in confusion, but end up being tolerant of everyone except those who follow the one true God, the God of the Bible. Those who are of the extreme right, such as the Ku Klux Klan, Nazis, or Islamic jihadists, have a strong compass, but a false one. Their philosophies are built on the absolute certainty of their flawed man-made theology and a fierce hatred of those different from themselves, both attributes which are the fruit of the God of this world. As Europeans have moved away from their foundational belief in God, they have moved both left and right into tolerance of extremist Islamic religion and hatred of the Jewish people. It is amazing to note that Israel, which according to the Bible, is the center of Satan's plan to destroy the human race, is often attacked first. When the nations who have the ability to help Israel don't, sooner or later, they find themselves having to deal with the same issue, and this time it threatens them. There is little doubt the world is falling into chaos, and through technology, evil will increase exponentially, and so will suffering. How terrible it will be to live in the coming darkness and hopelessness, worshiping the wrong God. ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi gives praise to his God. In the name of Allah, the merciful, we swear allegiance to the Prince of the Faithful and the Caliph of the Muslims. Allah is great. As will all nations, Israel will feel the hatred of the God of this world. But the Lord has said, and so shall it be, for God, the true God, will save Zion and build the cities of Judah that they may dwell there and possess it. Also the descendants of his servants shall inherit it, and those who love his name shall dwell in it. Maos Israel Ministries is a Messianic Jewish nonprofit organization based in Tel Aviv. We exist to be a witness of the good news to the people of Israel through outreach, discipleship, and raising up godly leaders. We translate and publish outstanding faith books in Hebrew and powerful testimony books to reach non-believers. We have a Hebrew outreach website with original media content produced by our team. We support the Hebrew-speaking congregation Tiferet Yeshua in Tel Aviv. We sponsor and host seminars and conferences. We support our Arab Christian brothers who love Israel and the God of Israel. Our I Stand With Israel Fund serves as a benevolence outreach, meeting the practical needs of Israeli believers. Our dream is to see God's promises fulfilled until the day when all Israel will be saved. We will now turn to our panel. So happy to have you back. Mati Shoshani from Jerusalem. It's great to be here again. And Shani Ferguson from Jerusalem. Thanks for having me. And Israel Pachter from Ashdod. Shani, I have a question for you. Entire generations of Palestinians are being raised on lies. 
about Israel, about the so-called history of the Palestinian people. Will you go into more depth about exactly what the Palestinians believe? Well, I, th I think first of all, um, saying what do the Palestinians believe is like saying what, is, what do Israelis believe? There's a you know, hundred different opinions. However, um, there are general categories. Um, I would say that within Israel, the Palestinians that are Israeli citizens um, would obviously have a much more favorable view towards Israel because they're raised among uh, Jews and there are whole villages of Arabs who gladly serve in the army, consider Israel their home, uh, would gladly defend Israel against their mm -hmm. Arab brethren. Then mm -hmm. you have Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza and perhaps spread out throughout the, the Middle East. And they are raised on a, an educational system that tells them that Israel never existed uh, prior to 1948, the Jews are really some strange descendants of the current day Jews, or the descendants of the Russians, or something. You know that mm -hmm. they're they're not even right. tied into the the lineage. Um, of but the of course, Bible. Uh, they're not them? tied in the lineage of the Bible, and really that didn't even happen. You mm -hmm. know that King David wasn't here. That there's just a plethora of didn't happens that mm -hmm. are part of the Palestinian right. psyche. So, mm -hmm. in one sense. Um, many of the Palestinians are raised believing that the Jews have absolutely no right to be here and they are just a temporary part of history. They don't, mm -hmm. they, they don't recognize Israel because they know that Israel is going to be gone at, at some point. On the other hand, I would like to, to qualify and say that you know, we live in Jerusalem, we live among Palestinian Arabs, we are friends with them, my kids go to school with them, they teach my children, there's no like, you know, what, if you're a Palestinian, you're absolutely like some evil, you know, person mm -hmm. um, and many of them even actually I have some friends that are Palestinians that they don't really like the fact that they live in Israel they do want a Palestinian state but they don't actually want to live in that Palestinian state if it were founded because they realize that the leadership would just yeah. pretty much do as much as they're doing right now which is nothing right right I would like to add to it Shira yes my kids they are uh, just done with the school uh, to my older kids they, they are in the army uh, my little kid 10 years old in the school right now and what I'm really happy to see, he never thought, never been taught in the school that we need to hate Palestinians, we need to right. hate Arab people, ever. Jews are not taught to hate no. uh, Arabs they try in to explain any the of the school books. That's ever. Mm -hmm. and not in, of course, I, don't, I cannot speak about every family in Israel, but officially, Israel never thought about that. Right. Let, let me just comment. Yeah. What we're talking about is called the narrative. Every people, this is something that, that exists everywhere in the world, every people has a story that they tell about themselves. Mm -hmm. So for the Jews, and, and each time it's a slight variation of the accurate depiction, mm -hmm. or sometimes a great mm -hmm. variation of the accurate mm -hmm. depiction of history, and they tell their national story. Right. So for Americans, we're the land of the free and the home of the brave. In Israel, we're the small who, who beat the, the few who beat the many. Mm -hmm. We're the Jews re reclaiming our father's land after 3,000 years. And for the Palestinians, they have a different story. That story doesn't include Israel, and they can't include Israel. Their, their national identity mm -hmm. or their people's identity is, we're the people of the Bible. We're the promised people. I just wanted to comment, you know, people assume that people have a, a similar theology, the Jews and the Arabs. Mm -hmm. We take, you know, in, in our personal faith, Jesus or Yeshua in a certain version. The Palestinian believers, in some cases, have a different version of him. He looks different. He talks different, and he's from a different lineage. So it's, do, it's, do, do Palestinians really believe that Jesus was the first Palestinian and not a Jew at all? Well, they have a, a different version of, of history. History mm -hmm. isn't a done deal in this region. It's still something that's happening. Mm -hmm. We say we're going back a few thousand years. They have an entirely different theory that I won't go into that we're actually uh, from Europe originally, not even uh, from, this, uh, from this region. And the Jews obviously say an, an opposite thing. And they're taught, and this is one of the biggest problems, in the Palestinian schools funded by the West, they're taught, and this has been going on since 1993, the first Oslo Accords, that Israel is the aggressor. They have done nothing wrong. They've made no mistakes. They don't have to repent or change their ways in any way. Mm -hmm. And if they just fight, they will return to their homes. This isn't in Palestine or the West Bank. This is in Tel Aviv, in Jaffa, in Jerusalem. You know, this is their entire mm -hmm. story as a people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to abolish mm -hmm. you from this land. So it, it's a big, it's a big yeah. problem. What percentage... Um, Israel, do you uh, believe or think that the Palestinians actually believe that there never were Jews in this land 
before uh, the founding of the modern state of Israel. Yeah. You know, coming back to my roots, I grew up in the country when uh, people knew if you say a lie many times, they repeat it again and again, people are going to believe in that. So uh, those who are open-minded and they really want to check history, it's mm -hmm. easy to check it. You know, you can even Google it in our days. Yes. Uh, but because they've been uh, hearing this lie again and again and again, mm -hmm. I, I come into the conclusion but that more and more people, especially probably younger generation, mm -hmm. they do believe in that. Mm -hmm. so, I would also agree yeah. that there is a large percentage of Palestinians that believe this. However, a Palestinian that does not believe that, that is somehow not necessarily Zionist, but likes what Israel has become, mm -hmm. cannot voice their opinion publicly. And so there's no way to really get a poll. They won't go on camera and say, I support Israel or whatever, because they'll have repercussions. Like there was mm -hmm. a, a woman, an, a Palestinian Arab, who actually had to go to, to England, and then mm -hmm. from there videotaped that she supported Israel and everything, because right. you know she, they just don't have that freedom there. So yes. it's really hard to study something like that. Well, what seems so crazy to me is people like Arafat was saying that Jesus was the first Palestinian. So, you know, I mean, if he says that, then I would think that all the little kids who are in school are going to believe uh, all of these tales He's that they tell. He's trying to redefine what a Palestinian yeah. is. To us, right. it's clear there's people that were from this area and I don't mean a lot of on a Sarah, I mean Bedouins, region, a lot of Bedouins, a lot of nomads, a lot of people that came in the 1920s, whatever, whereas they're trying to establish themselves as somehow like lineage of the Philistines and mm -hmm. the, the Assyrians right. and you yeah. know. So let, me, let me just give an example of this. Yeah. Saib Arikat, who's the head of the Palestinian yes. negotiation team, mm -hmm. publicly lies about his own heritage and the reason everyone knows it's a lie is because he, in his own memoirs he wrote his family lineage. He comes from, his family came from Saudi Arabia. They moved to this area a hundred years ago or so. You know, and yeah. they've, been, they've been here since then. Now he's claiming, no, I've been here for thousands of years. My family is from Jericho. We've right. been here for 3,000 years, right. which, which is a lie. It's an obvious yeah. lie. Right. But they're trying to rewrite history. And this is, it doesn't end just on family lineage. Right. If you follow archaeology, they're trying to erase any trace of the Jewish temple on the Temple Mount. Yes. If you look at history books, they're doing the same thing. If you're looking at the media, so this is this isn't just one small area. Right, this is a and battle it's, it's over... conscious, isn't it? When yeah, I hear very, about yeah. the archaeologists actually trying to hide Jewish roots by uprooting and throwing away the archaeological finds, then you know this is a very conscious lie. This is that also yeah. not a Palestinian tactic. This is an Islamic tactic because yeah. what they do is they go into an area, whatever you know was. Uh, in Turkey, um, Christian cathedrals or whatever, they will tear them down. Mm -hmm. They will build a mosque on top of them. Yeah. Which is really, if you think about it, why is there a mosque on the Temple Mount if yes. the temple is there? So, right. so their, their um, tactic is basically to replace mm -hmm. history and establish it as Islam right. has been here from the beginning. Right. Yeah. So, Mati, according to recent polls, if the Palestinians were to vote today, Hamas would win big in the West Bank, ousting President Abbas and his Fatah party. This is what happened in Lebanon when the Hezbollah uh, were voted in to the government and now they're part of the government. What can we do, Israel, what are we going to do? How can we stop Hamas from taking over the West Bank? Well, let me answer that with a, with a brief history lesson and I'm, I'm doing this because it's a very complicated answer yes one let's you know lay the lay down the foundations mm -hmm. the PLO or the PA whatever you want to call it in the West Bank was not democratically elected contrary to common belief mm -hmm. they technically lost the elections in 2006 and there have been no elections since then right. that's more than tribute so be four years it's been a lot more than four years so Mahmoud Abbas is technically not the voted the elected leader of the Palestinian people right. that's one Secondly, it's not surprising that the uh, PLO is going to lose in the elections. The PLO is an entity that is entirely funded by Western money. They're not elected and they're not funded by the Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, I mean, nearly none of their budget comes from the Palestinian people themselves. It's handed over by Israel, by And America. the PLO is the umbrella of organization. The PLO organization. is a political side of the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. Yes. 
Yeah, so, th so they're, they're funded from money that comes from abroad. If, right. and this is, it's almost happened several times. If America shuts, shuts down the, you know, the money coming over, if Israel mm -hmm. doesn't transfer the funds, they don't have any money to make payroll. They don't have right. any money to make payroll. They will lose the ability to finance their army, which, in, you know, to give you a perspective, this, the Palestinian Authority, has the most policemen, it's actually private armies, per capita than any other country in the world. So they're, they're financing a government that is holding you know, their government intact, right. or a, a mm -hmm. military that's holding the government mm -hmm. intact. So it's really a problematic question. Right. None of them have really been elected. They're both governing by right. power. The, the answer should be some, something more complex. So, so Israel, there's no answer, is there? If the PLO, if Hamas, if uh, the Palestinian Authority, if they really did what they wanted to do, they would be shooting rockets over from the West Bank onto our airports, Tel Aviv. It's right. Also, uh, you know, we need to think about uh, geography in our region. You know, all the West Bank on the high place. And from the points of West Bank, you can see almost all Israel. Yes. I have friends who live there and the same, literally the same. Whereas good weather, they can see from Ashkelon, Gaza Strip, all the way to Haifa, mm -hmm. through Tel Aviv. So it's a constant danger, and this is why there is a battle, and uh, you know, if you're controlling the heights, uh, in our days it's a little bit different, but it's still giving lots of power to the other powers right. around us. Well, I think that's all we have time for. Uh, thank you for joining, and we'll see you next week. The Maoz Israel Report app brings the free monthly Maoz Israel Report publication right to your fingertips. All the reports in all available languages, videos and bonus photos, all in one place, on your tablet or smartphone. Download the free app today and get the insider's perspective of the way things really are in Israel. That concludes today's episode of Israel Frontline. Thank you for watching. For more articles about Israel, sign up for the free Maoz Israel Report at maozisrael.org slash sign up. Please join us next week for another episode of Israel Frontline, where we will discuss whether or not there will be peace in the Middle East. On behalf of our team and myself, Shalom from Tel Aviv.